and I too rise to uh, speak on the Fair Work Amendment Family and Domestic Violence Lead Bill of 2018 and in support of the amendments moved by the member for uh, Gorton. I am extremely disappointed that only two government members have seen fit to add their names to the speaking list on this important bill before the House. And, uh, only one of those was added just hours ago after Labor exposed this shameful fact to the House. Because I'm disappointed because I don't think there's any more urgent and pressing law and order issue in this country today than the menace of domestic and family violence. There is, this is a very important bill, but as my Labor colleagues before me have spoken, it doesn't go nearly far enough. And it, shorts, it, it sorry, falls well short of the 10 days paid family and domestic violence leave that the women in this situation need in order to give them the best chance of escaping a violent relationship. Approximately one in four women, or uh, 2.2 million women and one in 13 men have experienced violence by an intimate partner since the age of 15. Today in Australia, like any other day, police will respond to over 700 cases of domestic violence. And one woman is killed in Australia by a partner or an ex every single week. Already this year, 63 Australian women have died due to violence. We have already well exceeded 2017's history of 54 deaths, and we are still one month out before the end of the year. While there is a growing awareness of the problem, there is nowhere near enough attention being paid to the solutions, uh, particularly the support required for women. And we know that around two out of three women who experience domestic violence are in fact in the workforce. So workplaces absolutely have to be part of the solution. We know that financial independence is one of the key predictors of successfully leaving a violent relationship, and access to a steady income can mitigate some of the effects of, of violence um, and provide one avenue out of abuse. Paid domestic violence leave is uh, one important way in which to help achieve this. And that is why domestic violence leave is so important, Deputy Speaker. Leaving an abusive relationship can be costly. I'll go to some of those expenses later, but the measures proposed in this bill simply don't go far enough. I mean, it's of no surprise that when this government seeks to amend industrial relations laws to accommodate uh, something like domestic violence leave, that they, they couldn't bring themselves to get it right. Uh, unlike the Labor Party, which has been in consultation for two years across Australia with women, employers, um, organ peak bodies and organisations who have been working who are either experiencing this in their own places or working in frontline services helping to assist this, um, the government hasn't put in those hard work yards. They're trying to play catch up now, putting this bill in the House, but they haven't done their homework properly beforehand. The ACTU, in fact, um, placed the total figure or the costs of um, escaping uh, a violent relationship at something like $18,000. So that's what we're up against, Deputy Speaker. And this bill was, of course, not prompted by a sudden change of heart or a, see, you know, a, a revelation to members opposite. It was prompted by the Fair Work Commission's decision to include five days unpaid domestic and family violence leave into all the modern awards. This became active for 2.3 million workers on awards from August of this year. The government's proposed legislation will amend the national employment standards to extend this provision to all employees. It's taken a very long time to get here, Deputy Speaker. Indeed, the government's first, first committed to taking this action in March of this year. So why are we only talking about this in November? Since then, we've had almost uh, some 14 sitting weeks and tens of bills, dozens of bills that have, uh, the government have considered 
far more pressing for this House to deal with that have been coming before here. Um, you know, they have not prioritised women fleeing domestic violence in this chamber till now. Labor supports this bill in principle. Indeed, it was Labor that first committed to deliver family and domestic violence leave back in 2017. And we came to this position, as I said, after extensive conversations with victims and survivors of domestic violence, with frontline workers, with uh, businesses, unions, organisations that deal daily with the tragic impacts of uh, domestic violence. Their overwhelming message uh, was that we received was that domestic violence is a workplace issue and people who have experienced domestic violence deserve the time and support to escape without losing pay. People told us again and again that family and domestic violence leave should be a universal workplace right. We are glad that the government is finally starting to listen. And of course, this bill is a step in the right direction. But all of the evidence before us says it falls way short of what is needed. Too many women choose to stay in an abusive relationship because they simply don't have the money to leave. Others quit work because they don't think they'll be able to maintain it and still do all of the things that are needed in order to flee the violent relationship. And this is a horrific outcome, particularly when we know that maintaining a job is absolutely key to successfully escaping a violent relationship. We know that the most dangerous time for a woman is when she is leaving that violent relationship. And of course, it's a time when she needs all the support possible. Domestic violence leave crushes stigma and protects employees from discrimination. It shows women that their employer understands, supports and cares for them. It gives them the time and space they need to rebuild their lives while maintaining their financial independence and, of course, it gives them the best chance of successfully building a new life for themselves. Leaving a violent relationship is traumatic. It also can be enormously demanding, exhausting and absolutely time-consuming. There are doctor's appointments, trips to the police station, meetings with lawyers, counsellors, financial advisers and a whole host of other services, not to mention house inspections, applications and calls to real estate agents to find a new home. Then there's the locksmiths to fix the, and to continuously change the locks every time your violent partner tracks you down. And of course, women with children are often finding new schools and making sure their mental and physical needs of their children are looked after. So it's clear that the government's plan for just five days of unpaid leave isn't good enough. Labor would like to see the government match our commitment for 10 days paid domestic violence leave. The cumulative stress of finding a safe place to live, seeking out legal advice, accessing and counselling services, medical treatment should not be exasperated by the fear of losing your job or indeed the financial hit of the loss of income because of days having to take off work. And this is, yet this is the very brutal reality for Australian women today. They simply can't afford to go without pay, especially with the extra cost of trying to find bonds, rent money, um, maybe buying furniture and having to pay for some of the specialist services and uh, counselling um, services that are required. In making this unpaid leave, the government is essentially saying that only women who can afford to leave without pay should be able to leave a violent relationship. And that is not the message we want to send to Australian women. Too often we hear members of the government bemoaning the scourge of domestic violence. But when there's a real chance to actually do something meaningful about it, their actions rarely match the determination or strength of their words. Indeed, it was this government who removed domestic and family violence provisions from some of the public service enterprise agreements that it was negotiating. And some of the comments of the government members on this matter have been deeply concerning. It wasn't long ago that the then Employment Minister, Senator Michaela Cash, argued strongly against family and domestic violence leave. 
She even went as far as to uh, say if it proceeded, women would lose their jobs. This is appalling and, of course, an absolute nonsense, a fig leaf for inaction. If you followed this argument to its conclusion, you might uh, just as well say we need to get rid of carers' leave and maternity leave as they, dis as they disproportionately needed and accessed by women. Around the same time, Finance Minister Senator Matthias Cormann dismissed family and violence leave as another cost to the Australian economy. This is revealed as a particularly shabby argument in light of the research done by the Australian Institute in 2016, a study which found that domestic violence leave wage payouts actually cost less than one fiftieth of one per cent, or 0.02 per cent of current payrolls. And even then, these costs themselves are likely to be totally offset by the benefits to the company that they'd receive in terms of reduced turnover and increased productivity. Without this provision, we know that some women are actually leaving work entirely when the pressure becomes too much. And I know this from women who've come to see me in my electorate office, Deputy Speaker. By providing this extremely modest support, employers maintain an employer rather than going through the expensive and time-consuming process of hiring and training a new person. They're likely to be rewarded with a loyal, committed staff member who appreciates the support they have been given. It is worth noting at this point that the private sector is well ahead of the government when it comes to this issue. In fact, there is a terrific roll call of big household names that have uh, already instituted paid domestic violence leave. I know my colleagues have mentioned before, but companies like Telstra, NAB, IKEA, Qantas and Virgin are leading the way in supporting their staff. In fact, they have been, um, there have been over 1,000 agreements with at least 10 days of paid domestic violence leave approved under the Fair Work Act between the beginning of 2016 and the middle of 2017. And this is because these businesses know that it's not only the right thing to do morally, but it also makes sense economically despite the nonsense being peddled by the finance minister. In fact, there is a cost, but it's for the inaction. Indeed, anything that discourages a woman from leaving violent relationships not only hurts her, her children and her community, but it has great broader economic impacts for our nation. In 2016, domestic violence was estimated to cost the business sector $1.9 billion. But it's not just business that's moving to enshrine family and domestic violence leave. Indeed, Queensland, uh, the Australian Capital Territory and Western Australian governments have all implemented 10 days paid domestic violence leave. South Australia offers 15 days and Victoria has 20. So every Liberal state has now enshrined paid domestic violence leave, and it's not just Australia. In July this year, New Zealand also um, agreed to guarantee 10 days paid leave for workers experiencing family and domestic violence. So again, like so many other issues, federal Liberal governments find themselves isolated, behind the times and completely out of step with the country and our community opinion. We also um, need to recognise that paid family and domestic violence leave is just the start when it comes to addressing the menace of domestic violence. There is much more work that has to be done. Labor has a long-standing commitment to invest an uh, additional $88 million for a new safe housing fund to increase housing options. We've also um, committed to boosting legal aid funding by $49 million to meet the increased demand on services resulting from uh, changes that banned the, the uh, cross-examination laws in the family court. I applaud uh, the recent announcements of last week the uh, um, commitments from a future shortened Labor government, if elected. And indeed, in my closing um, remarks, whilst this bill is in this, a step in the right direction, as I said, it's, it's nowhere near Labor's commitment. And uh, it falls well short of what our victims and survivors of domestic violence need and all of those who work in frontline services. I'd like to pay special tribute to those in my electorate like Nova for Women and Children, Jenny's Place, Trisha's uh, House, Hunter Women's Centre, Got Your Back Sister, 
These are the women who are working tirelessly to end Water. the scourge of violence against women and children.